Hello and welcome back to the channel. It's a Lit Life with Miranda Reads and today we're going to be talking about one of my most frequently asked questions. How the F do you read so much? Let's get started. Hands down, I get asked this question very frequently. And by frequently, I mean several times a week. And to be fair, it is a fair question. After all, it's only June and I've read 150 books so far. And I plan to probably read another 150 or so by December. And that's on top of going for my PhD and maintaining my hobbies like gardening, baking, crocheting, and being the best dog mom I can possibly be. Now the voraciousness of my reading has definitely ebbed and flowed over the years, but I have always loved reading and that's because of my mom. Literally my earliest memories, most of them are of the library. We would do reading Saturdays there, we would participate in the children's reading challenge, my mom would read to me before we go to bed, we would have story time during the day. Essentially my mom loved reading so much and when I was a little kid I wanted to be like my mom, so I loved reading too. And that has been something that I have just internalized this love of literature for ever since. <laughs> now in 2015 though, I was finishing up my degree in biochemistry, my undergraduate degree, and I was applying for graduate degrees and I ended up going for my biophysics PhD. But I noticed around that time that I was just really stressed, I was really focused on school, and I was only reading about a book a week, which is a lot for some people, but for me it was very, very, very little. And that's when I decided to make a change and this is how I did it. I feel like the biggest thing that influences me into being able to read about 300 books a year is the simple fact that I read what I like. I feel like as an adult and especially as a graduate student there are expectations for what kind of books you should read or you're supposed to read and if you don't like those books then it becomes really hard to read them and enjoy the reading process. Like we all remember what it was like in English class when the teacher picked out kind of a bummer book or a book that just wasn't interesting to you. It was like slogging through mud. And I think that nothing can kill the excitement and love for reading like being forced to read a bad book. <laughs> Which is why when I decided to pick up my reading in grad school, my first rule was only pick up books that I liked. So if a book was not intrinsically interesting to me, it stayed on the shelf. If it looked like it was going to be sad or depressing or put me in a mood or a funk, I just didn't pick it up. And if a book was turning out to be really, really bad and I didn't like it, I put it down. There is no one out there who has any right to force you to read something that you don't want to read. And I feel like that is really, really important to internalize. I've essentially gotten to the point where I am comfortable and I am happy just picking out whatever the heck catches my fancy this week. Does this mean I sometimes read books about the historical importance and significance of the codfish? Yes. Does this also mean I pick up artisanal sourdough cookbooks when I want to learn a new craft? Also yes. And does this mean that I occasionally pick up an entire children's series that I never got around to when I was a kid? Heck yes. I'm sure you can imagine that because of my reading philosophy, I read a ton of books. And while the average pages per book is around 266 for my books I've read so far this year, I read anything from 48 pages to 950 pages per book. Does this mean that some books I read have more pictures than words in it? Yes. <laughs> and do I enjoy it? Double yes. Now that I'm in grad school, um, somewhat obviously my time is limited. I no longer have long lazy summers where I can read multiple books in a day. I no longer just finish school at 3 p.m. and have the rest of the night to myself. <laughs> but I still get through a lot of books and this is how I do that. Now, the first thing is um, I guess the type of book. I read a mixture of paperback and audiobooks. As far as my paperback books, I try to read about a half hour to an hour before bed every night and a little bit more on the weekends. On vacations, I enjoy having book binges where I read just an absolute ton and I love spending an entire day in the backyard with my dog and my book and just enjoying that. Plus, um, it also helps that I get a lot of these books for free and if you want to know how I get a lot of free books from publishers, check out that video. 
but I would say the bulk of my reading actually comes from audiobooks, especially during the school year. Now, I mainly use Libby, which is a free app that connects to my state's library, like the digital library, which means I have access to thousands of ebooks and audiobooks. However, I do get some audiobooks for completely free online because their copyright has expired, so you can get a lot of older books. Um, I know there's some YouTube channels, which I can link down below if you guys are interested in. And then the last one I have is Audible. Now, Audible, you do have to pay and then you keep the audiobook, but I'll use that for books that I know I'm going to love and ones I know I will read over and over and over, and I just cannot wait for them to come to Libby. It's not just that I listen to audiobooks, it's also the when and how that really influences my ability to read so many books in a year. Anytime I don't need to use 110% of my concentration, I will pop in an audiobook and listen. So that means like when I'm grocery shopping, when I'm gardening, preparing dinner, cleaning the house, I will have an audiobook going on in the background. And especially right now with my degree, I'm like finishing up a paper, I'm doing data simulations. And because of that, I end up having a lot of like just processing of data that I have to do. That's a great time for me to listen to an audiobook. I know at first I did have a little bit of a trouble multitasking, but when I realized that, what I did was I put in an audiobook or two that I had already read and I wanted to reread. So that way, if I tuned in and out of the audiobook, it didn't really matter because I already knew the story going in. And once I kind of got used to just that multitasking aspect, I was able to listen to new stories and more complicated stories as well. The other factor is how I listen to audiobooks. Now, a typical audiobook is roughly between 6 to 15 hours long at 1x slash normal speed. I listen to it at 3x, aka 3 times speed, meaning that 9 hour audiobook is over in just 3 short hours. And on a complete side note, one thing I love, love, love about Audible you can listen to books at 3.5x speed. It is like, whoo! It is the fastest one I have ever seen, and I love it. However, I, I definitely don't recommend just picking up an audiobook and immediately shooting off to 3x speed, because that can sound really garbled if you haven't like trained your ears to it yet. When I first started listening to audiobooks, I did listen to them at 1x speed, then I sped it up to 1.25, 1.5, etc. until eventually I got it up to 3x speed, and now I can hear, process, and understand it pretty darn well. There are some slight cases where the narrator speaks fast naturally, so when you speed it up it's like really, really fast, or if there is like a heavy or a different accent that I'm not as familiar with, then I would have to slow down the audiobook, but that doesn't happen too often actually. And I would say the last major influence on my reading, I don't know, is it reading skill? Reading ability, uh, tenacity maybe, <laughs> is reading challenges. They are like fun book scavenger hunts. Some are based off of author names, some are based off of title names, some are based off of like prompts, you have to read a book by this, a book about that. But they're just a really fun way to help pick out books that you may not have considered otherwise. And it is a tradition for my mom and I to do a summer reading challenge, which I just joined at my local library and every time you read a book I think you get like a raffle ticket this year and you get to enter it for the end of summer drawing. So it's a lot of fun just to have challenges and like this external motivation where you get to check off something when you read it. Now if you ever wanted to know how the heck I read so much in a year, now you know. It's a combination of reading what you like and not being afraid to say no to what you don't like setting aside a little bit of time for yourself every single day to read. Checking out audiobooks and listening to them fast. <laughs> and reading challenges. And that's it. Alright, I just want to say thank you so, so much for watching and happy reading. Bye-bye.